Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to the preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. During this stream we were actually listening to the Apollo 13 audio in real time from apolloinrealtime.org and so we will be hearing that momentarily. This stream was therefore during the anniversary of the launch of Apollo 13 and currently the audio is before the Apollo 13 launch. Here we are launching a Saturn V with supplies for the moon, uh, specifically our Lunar Gateway, such as it is. Obviously not an exact replica of Lunar Gateway, though in a very elongated orbit similar to the Halo orbit Lunar Gateway would be in, and containing at least two of the modules that the actual Lunar Gateway would have. So here is first stage separation. Off that goes. I just kept the skirt with the first stage for simplicity. In real life it would have separated separately. But here goes the second stage, so a modified Saturn V. In this case, on top of the S4B stage, we have a Timberwind nuclear stage, and that will complete the transfer to the moon. Normally the S4B stage, the one we are on right now, would complete the transfer to the moon, but it will not have enough juice for that. It will do the first part of the burn, and then the Timberwind will do the second part of the burn. So here the S4B is doing its part and finishing off, and then we need a little bit more, not with those, with the Timberwind stage here. So whether the Timberwind stage would be used like this, probably not. No, this is probably not the best use unless it was used in a more reusable fashion, but this certainly allows us to get more supplies over to the moon than just with the normal Saturn V rocket. And so here we are bringing the stuff into orbit. There we go, the camera flip as we make orbit around the moon. In order to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway we had to do an awkward radio burn. And that's because this is not the optimal transfer time to Lunar Gateway. If you take a look at the alarm clock, it notes that Lunar Gateway time, well, right there, is 17 days because we waited another 5 days. But, yeah, that's still not the right time to rendezvous. So we needed to do the radio burn to adjust our orbit because we were not arriving at the correct time. Now, we have a mix of docking ports at Lunar Gateway. And we needed to free the one that the supply vessel could dock at, we really should replace all the docking ports with the same docking port for simplicity, but I have not done that yet. So that is a spent fuel vessel that was delivering liquid hydrogen, liquid methane, liquid oxygen to the station for our lander, among other things. And now, well, we can't really fit this in the same location, can we? It does Shinkansen space plane there is a little big. It, if, we, if we're really, really, really careful, which seems unlikely, we might be able to do it, but I decided it was safer to just move the Shinkansen out. So off it goes. And I took the Kerbals out, so it's uncrewed and we'll just send it back to Earth as is. The Shinkansen was used to bring some tourists over to Learning the Gateway by their request. And there we have the docking of the supply vessel, so that's pretty huge as you can see. And here we're getting the Shinkansen ready to go back to Earth. Basically every month there is one optimal time to arrive at Lunar Gateway and one optimal time to leave and go back to Earth. That's optimal, that doesn't mean you can't arrive or go back. It's just that that's the optimal time and this is not the optimal time right now. I try and plot one, I dump the extra food and water to get more Delta V. But it turns out the best thing to do is to wait about two weeks. So we leave the Shinkansen for now and let it wait for that time. And during that time I want to make sure that the water recycling on our Mars missions continues to work. So here's your pops and Matt and Kerman. We're making sure that they have enough water and then we do the burn with the Shinkansen. It's a fairly manageable burn in this case. But we also have to do an additional burn outside of Lunar SOI to fine-tune our approach to the Earth. And so that's that burn. But we do have enough. And we are not risking any Kerbals, thankfully. You can see our approach is very much polar. 
and Apollo 13 is now go for launch. Uh, three minutes. Here we are tucking in the docking extension thing. We kept it out because it's got the solar panels as well. Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell says Odyssey is go. He will be the last one to perform a function here during the countdown. Okay, so here we go for the Apollo 13 launch and re-entry. Sequence has started. Six, five, four, four, three, two, one. Well, they're going to have an interesting uh, experience. As far as the Shinkansen is concerned, this is only the first of many re-entries because it has to air brake. So here it's going back up after only shortening its orbit. And honestly, this would be bad for any people on board because of the radiation. Passing through the radiation belts multiple times. Houston, we don't have a story on why the import out was uh, early, but the uh, other engines are go and you're go. Should be no problem, yeah. Okay, uh, I decided to allow you to hear the Apollo 13 audio for a little bit. CMC is go. And so here we go around again. This took a long time during the stream. You can see we're nowhere near to low Earth orbit yet, having done a few passes. But ultimately, we were on our final pass here, so this is the final descent. Normally, I'm mostly concerned about the heating. We saw some overheating indications on the passes, and I really brought it in as close as I thought was safe. The other thing that I'm concerned about usually is this pitch down, which if you do it too soon, you'll stall out. If you do it too fast, you won't have enough yaw control. Uh, and it seemed to be doing quite well down to 17 kilometers, but then it decided to do this. So something wrong happened. And yep, that was a problem. It wasn't able to pull out of this dive either. It's possible that some canards might have helped at this point, but I accidentally moved that Kerbal Alarm Clock window because I was trying to pan the view and so covered up the plane. But it hits the ground in a sort of, well, something ablated in order to save the rest of the plane. Not sure what it was, but yeah, a miraculous save somehow. Anyway, that was just testing Shinkansen's aerodynamics and re-entry capabilities, and obviously some work needs to be done there. I've brought it down safely before, so I don't know exactly what. Something was imbalanced, but only at the final bit. Here, we're bringing Anonymous Pizza, who previously landed on the moon, back into orbit and back to Lunar Gateway. And we replenished its propellant using the ISRU units at that base. That was a key part of this mission. The problem is that I forgot we had limited ignitions on these B-7 engines. We got two B-7 engines there. Here we're doing a rendezvous burn to meet up with Lunar Gateway. We have an actual rendezvous plotted. But even though we had a lot of Delta V available, we didn't have any ignitions to use it with. So I decided to use this derelict supply vessel around the moon. It had plenty of uh, fuel and maybe it could act like a tug. Now in the audio for Apollo 13 I decided to fast forward to the Houston we have a problem bit while we were dealing with our own problems so here it comes. Okay. We got more on a problem. Okay, listen, listen, you guys. Probably We've again. lost uh, okay. fuel cell yeah, one and two pressure. I don't know what it we was. lost uh, O2 tank two pressure. You can see. You want to look at it? Hang yeah, yeah, down, Okay. Roger. Stand by. They got a problem. You see a hard road. Okay, so they're dealing with their problem, I'm dealing with my much more minor problem. Uh, here, the question is, even though the the supply vessel has quite a lot of delta V, does it have enough delta V to push 
anonymous pizzas pod over to Lunar Gateway. That I was not sure of yet. And of course, our intended rendezvous is now messed up, so we will have to readjust our orbit to get a new rendezvous. But there it is, and that was actually the end of the first stream we're covering in this video. And I completely forgot about Anonymous Pizza when I started the second stream. We had other stuff to do in Kerb Alarm Clock, and I focused on that stuff naturally. And it was mostly Mars missions. So here we're doing a correction burn for this lander on its approach to Mars, and getting it to where it can aerobreak. That's important. It's got the heat, inflatable heat shield there. This is a, another mission to Mars. This is George of Mars's mission to Phobos, actually. And so eventually this wants to get into orbit around Phobos, a very minor correction being done with RCS. This actually does not have anything to do with Mars. This is on its way as a supply vessel to Jupiter and will get into orbit around Jupiter. Presumably that's for potential tourists, though so far I have not had any Jupiter tourists here. Uh, that stage uh, does things that are best done during time warp, let's put it that way. Anyway. So here we've got the ion engine and Jupiter. We need to make sure to capture on Jupiter. The ion engines are going to take some time to do that. Fortunately, it's not a very big burn. These gas giants help a lot when it comes to capturing around them. And we manage it just fine. It's got a lot of delta V so that when we finally get tourists here, it can adjust its orbit to get to them. That's the one plus side of the ion engines. So we leave it in a sort of high orbit so that it can more easily adjust to wherever it needs to go. And this is a Jupiter station that is getting into orbit around Jupiter. Same ion engine setup. It's a nuclear reactor that is powering the ion engines, of course. Solar panels would not work very well out here. And probably we want to get the supply vessel and the station together. That would be nice, though not necessary. All right, well, the burn to capture took a lot longer with this one. But again, we managed it just fine. Now, this is completely different. This is a mission to Ceres. We're, we're jumping all over the place here. Uh, we're truly a solar system tourism thing. This is just a scanner probe, though. There goes the Briz outer tank. It's a drop tank for the Briz stage. And we're capturing around Ceres. Takes a lot of Delta V to capture around Ceres. But we want to scan it for ore, which we can convert to some propellants. And we do have ore at Ceres, which is helpful because, again, it takes a lot of, a lot of fuel to capture around Ceres. And it takes a lot of fuel to get from Ceres to other places, too. So it is helpful that we have some in situ resources to utilize. Here we are back to Mars missions, and this is Aeronym and Karovka in their very big NTP-2 vessel, and capturing around Mars, in this case with propulsion instead of with an aerobrake. This whole setup is based on the NASA nuclear thermal propulsion proposal, and the, the tank masses are based on that, the engine configuration is, and the HAB is as well. So basically this is one way NASA could get to Mars. Looks fancy. And there they are. So, yep, they have captured. Unfortunately, everything's in different orbits. It is one of my major aspirations as we do the live streams now to try and get all that stuff together somehow because it's very cumbersome to deal with all of them separately. But those orbits are not so easy to get together. Here we're bringing in another supply vessel. This one has a particular destination that really needs those supplies quickly. And so we immediately aim for rendezvous even though it's it's in a very different orbit. It takes some weird burns to get it over there. And it doesn't have that much delta V if you take a look. Yeah, it, uh, it, it really take look at the orbit. It's perpendicular to the target's orbit. So, you know, this was dicey. And basically, we're, we're doing a straight-up left turn, <laughs> right? I mean, this is not a thing you do in space a whole lot. And it takes all of its remaining delta V to do this. But the good thing is that we were encountering the target very high over Mars. That makes the burn less arduous. So here we're taking care of it. And you can see 
just barely having more delta v than the target relative velocity so we can make it but it's really tight and actually the target station I decide we'll do the final docking portion we let go of the useless lander that lander ended up being well it ends up being repurposed again if you just leave things in orbit if they have fuel they can be useful at some point but for now it wasn't any good for landing on Mars let's put it that way so here we are bringing the two things together and making sure that your pops and Madden get their supplies because they were in fact running out so talking anytime now okay there we go all right so that's done and that's when I remembered anonymous pizza here we're dumping the useless hydrogen and uh, liquid oxygen not the oxygen that anonymous pizza breathes but the liquid oxygen because the tug, the supply vessel, uh, uses hypergolic fuels, not the hydrogen or oxygen. So we, the MMH and MON3 are the propellants that will be used. And again, this is one of those crazy intercepts. We're actually crossing the target orbit. We're doing uh, interesting, very interesting burn. You can see it's not prograde, it's sort of radial. It's, and then our approach to the target is basically perpendicular. It's not as bad around the moon as around Mars, but it's still rough. Still, as long as you do the intercept high over the gravitational body, you can minimize how much delta V it takes. And in this case, we have much more margin than we had with that supply mission around Mars. One thing we didn't have was the ability to dock this because the lander didn't have its propellant for RCS, because at least need that in order to dock. So we had Anonymous Pizza EVA out to the station and with him reaching safety and us deorbiting the lander plus tug, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.